Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here today we want to find the uh, factorial of a matrix A. So here A is a um, diagonalizable matrix and see if there is a uh, closed form out there. So what's neat is that but because that there is a factorial existing like alongside with, you know, the matrix A, that there's going to be some relationship with, you know, the utilization of the gamma function as well. And that's primarily the use, the usage we're going to be using to find that closed form, especially um, there's also with the whole exponential matrix as well. There was actually one example I did back in the past for um, a computation of exponential matrix. Um, you can check that out. It's the link in the description below, but that's also what we'll be using to um, find our little closed form. And it's also worth noting that diagonal, diagonalizable matrix um, A, that has to exist not only a diagonal matrix, but also invertible matrix as well, such that, um, you know, A itself is diagonalizable. So we have to be utilizing that fact. It's also, you want to also be careful here with matrices. Um, matrix multiplication is actually not commutative. So that's like there's that fact that if you have two matrices A and B, so A times B does not equal B times A. The results are going to be different. This is not dealing with like numbers. Here we're dealing with matrices with like specific entries. So the results are going to be different if that was the case. Sorry if I'm, I'm a little sick. I got a little issue with my throat and it's probably like my sinuses due to allergies outside during the season so if my voice is low sorry i'll try to speak up as much as i can in the video and probably in the future videos and if this continues on so anyway um nothing more needs to be said but let's actually just jump in and find our little close form so obviously with definitions of factorial we know that n factorial is actually defined as the product of from starting from k is equal to one to n for um k such that n are n are positive integers so i'll write this as um z plus it's also worth noting that um with factorials in relationship with the gamma function we know that for x factorial um so we have that that's actually equal to gamma of x plus one and so if we write that as the integral representation so it's from zero to infinity of e to the negative t and n times t to the power x dt such that x or x is not negative values so x is greater than zero so now what if we actually just put in the matrix a back into our um you know our little factorial definition with the gamma and the integral representation <laughs> so here i'll write so capital a then factorial then we know that that's just equal to gamma then we just plug the factorial back in but um, you want to be careful and not write plus one for this because we're dealing with matrices. Another thing to say is that um, we have the identity matrix where, you know, all the diagonals of the eigenvectors are just one and all the rest of the other entries are zero. So we're dealing with some, you know, standard like or rather some diagonalizable matrix A. So it's worth um, it's worth best to write that as we write this as capital I, capital I being the you know identity matrix for some, you know, n by n dimensions. Um, so this is just something to just uh, work around with a little bit better instead of having to write plus one since one is just a value rather not dealing with some, you know, you know, with some standard like matrix itself. So anyway, so here we just write that as the integral representation zero to infinity of e to the negative t and then t to the power um, the matrix of a and then dt. We can actually write t to the power, you know, the matrix a a little bit differently as well. Um, we can write this in terms of the exponential and the relationship of the, well, the relationship of the exponential and the um, natural log. So here we can say that t to the power, the matrix of A, we can write that as um, E, then to the power, um, the matrix A itself, then multiply by um, ln of t. And then utilizing this fact, we can say that we can also write this in the form of a power series expansion. So now we know that e to the power x, for example, is the following um, series expansion. That's just the um, infinite sum of x to the power n and n divided by n factorial. So utilizing with this um, exponential right here, so we can write that e to the power the matrix a and ln of t is just equal to the infinite sum n is equal zero of a to the power n the a is being the matrix of course and then ln to the power n of t and then divided by n factorial 
keep in mind that um, I said that A is to di some diagonalizable matrix, so it's also worth writing to um, put the formula that um, A is equal to P times D times P inverse, where it's, no where it's um, note to say that D is the, um, I'll just abbreviate this, the DIAG D -I -A -G diagonal matrix where um, the diagonal elements being the eigenvectors of the matrix A and then P is being our um, invertible matrix. So that's how the formula comes together. That's how we get our you know, diagonalizable matrix. We need these um, formulas. Now let's continue and say that if we were to raise the exponents of our diagonalizable matrix right here, then it's uh, well known to say that a to this, um, the matrix A to the power N is actually just equal to P then times D to the power N then times P inverse. So you're thinking why just um, raising um, the diagonal matrix with the exponent and not the invertible matrix? Well, if you were to expand this out, um, so like N many times, you'll notice that um, <clears throat> the P inverse and the P itself with the expansion, they actually cancel each other out, and you're only left with just the left-hand side of just the diagonal ma or the invertible matrix P, and then all the way at the right-hand side of the expansion, just P inverse. So we're just left with this, but we're dealing with um, D, um, the diagonal matrix, n many times. So that's why we can write it this way. So in other words, they just cancel each other out. And now let's put in the fact that um, it's worth noting that the diagonal matrix D is actually just some matrix so I'll just um, denote this as D sub 1 this is going to be 0 uh, that's a 0 over here that entry right there is 0 and so it's going to follow with follow with the ellipse too let me just get to that in a sec so ellipse here ellipse here diagonally ellipse here here and then here and so if we take the exponent of that so to the power n so you're just raising basically just the um, the entries of these those um, diagonal elements so D1 to the power N, that's zero over here, zero, and then D to the power N right here of D sub N. So now let's actually just plug back the D sub N back into here. So now we have that A sub A to the power N is just P, then multiply with the uh, D to the power N, the diagonal matrix to the raise to the power N, we put in back those entries, so D sub one to the power N, zero right here, D, D sub n to the power n, and then multiply by p inverse. If we go back to, let's see, the t to some matrix A, um, I should kind of just should have write this as t to the power uh, matrix A, not really with the braces. I mean, it's not really necessary, but you know. Okay, so if we go back to t to the ma power matrix A, and then, um, so we said that that's e to the power A and then ln of t, then we use our power series expansion, so now really, we could just plug in back the, um, you know, our diagonal matrix formula back into here with, of course, with the raised exponent itself. So now we have T to the power matrix A. We said that that was um, the following written over here. Then if we just write the power series expansion like so, and is equal to zero. Um, there's more room coming up. So how about I just write this in the next line? So you're, you're gonna see what happens next or right, not really next, but eventually. So then we say P then to the power um, times D to raised to some, um, the exponent N, then it's inverse, then LN to the power N of T, then divided by N factorial. Really P and P inverse, um, they don't really matter in this summation since we're only dealing with the diagonals. So you, you can use that, you know, assumption or rap, not really assumption but more of like that similarity and say that they're just constants for example and you can actually just move those outside of the summation well really and i also said that because um, matrix multiplication is not commutative so really what we can do is this p can go outside of the exponent and then the inverse um, p can just like stay out here so the way i'll group it like this so here we have p then we have you know our expo our summation over here so d power n ln of n t then n factorial and then outside this will be p inverse here's the interesting part so we can now plug in the so we have the diagonal d sub n so really we can actually just take those um, entries and then sub them back into here then also 
That also happens to mean that we actually have a um, new way of writing the sum. So P, then the infinite sum is equal to zero. So this is gonna be, so right here we have ln of T and then D sub one of N. That's just coming from our entries right here. And we just multiply the ln of, um, we just multiply what the series in here and that distribute N factorial. This is zero, zero here, then ln squared t d sub n sub n, then divided by n factorial. Then what we can do here is obviously we can now actually just distribute the sums back into here. So now all the entries inside our matrix will be taken with the um, infinite sum. So p, then um, let me put this as a um, let me read it. Really, let me just reiterate and say that this is still um, what is it t to the power a matrix so we have p then we have our infinite sum n is equal zero ln n t d one n yeah and then divided by n factorial this will be a zero here then right here zero ln n t d n n then divided by n factorial and this will be p inverse outside this is zero here these are ellipses follow over here Let's take a look at um, each of the entries, the diagonal entries over here. So worth noting that these entries, so we have, let's see, we're going to focus just from some n entries. So infinite sum n is equal zero, ln n t, then d sub n to the power n, n factorial. We could, we notice just from that definition of our exponential, you know, um, the e to the power x, that power series expansion, we can just go backwards and say that this is just e to sub d sub n value, then times ln of t, where therefore that's just t to the power d sub n. So now we can now say that t sub matrix, then everything will become simplified together and say this is t to the power d sub one, this is zero, zero here, then t to the power d sub n, and then outside is just some um, inverse p, uh, p inverse. We're just about almost done. So we have t to the power a, or the matrix a. So if we just go back to here, uh, really, that's there's there really shouldn't be any races in this situation. But you know that's fine. You get the gist. Um, so now we can reiterate and say that a factorial. So here we'll put like this. So a factorial is just equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t, and then we times this with p within our uh, matrix d, t to the power d sub 1 0 0 t d sub n then times the p inverse then dt i'm just gonna skip that step and say that you know p can be using that same adjust um, same justification and say that you can actually move the p and p inverse outside because it does not depend on here and you can also, and jumping one step forward, you're integrating each of those entries. So now we have a matrix of the diagonal entries of those integrals. So now here we have P, then we have the integral. Here, let me write this a little bigger since there's more, there's more to write. So we have P, then we have the integral zero to infinity, E to the negative T, and then t d1 dt this is zero the integral is zero to infinity e negative t then t to the power d sub n dt zero over here and then we have p inverse so now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to actually erase this side of the board and um make some room for the final you know writing and so from coming from this step here, we can now replace everything with the, um, you know, those um, improper integrals, replace that with the definition of the gamma in relation with the factorial. So now we have that this is just P. Let me also just write that as um, a factorial, just so we can just utilize and say where we left off. This is equal to, so P then times D1 factorial, zero, zero, then D sub N factorial, and then p inverse but then that just says that um but it also says that we can actually just replace with the gamma function so therefore we're pretty much just done so it's just p then replace everything in terms of gamma so gamma of d1 plus one that's why we just write this in entries because it's you know the identity matrix for some n by n matrix zero zero here then d sub n plus one right here and then just 
P inverse, just like that. And so there we have it. We found our little closed form of some diagonal, diagonalizable matrix A with the following, like, like so. And just like that, we are done. Um, one sec, let me, <laughs> this looks a little off, so let me put the P so it's centered. And so there we have it the uh, closed form of our diagonal matrix A. And I think it's also interesting to say that if you were to plug, for example, a uh, zero matrix, you're gonna get that the result is actually just the identity matrix itself, since by just plugging in that closed form, because um, everything with all the diagonals is just all, you know, the zero matrix. So you have gamma of one of all those diagonal entries. And so everything will just be the identity matrix itself. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.